behalf of Lunette and all of her family, I want to thank you today for being here as we, as we remember the life that God has given to Ed here on this earth, and as we are filled with that hope, that, that sure and certain confidence that Ed is with Jesus today, as we celebrate the, the new life that he has in Christ. And thank you for being here as we do that today, as we are surrounded by and encouraged by the body of Christ here in this place. As we, as we prepare for our time together today, I want to invite up uh, Steve, one of, one of Ed's sons-in-law, as, as he has a few words to say uh, to open our time today. Said that's son in law married to uh, Michelle, his youngest daughter. Um, so I just wanted to come up here. I have the honor of getting to share some of the memories uh, that the family has passed on to us uh, that we want to talk about Ed today and, um, and remember him and share some of our ideas that we had with him. So as I look at the memories that came in and as I listen to the family talking after Ed passed back at the house, you know, going through memories and laughing and and looking at old pictures and things, you know, some of the some of the themes, I guess, that came out of it uh, were uh, handyman, maybe Ed could fix everything. Um, family, family was definitely right on the top of the list. Uh, fun, Ed was a really fun guy, and I guess funny should go right along with that. And then sports. So you know, as you think about that, um, handyman, fun, money, sports, and family. I think that pretty well does a good description of Ed, and I think uh, I'd also add friends in there. He has a lot, of, a lot of great friends that he spent a lot of time with, so sharing some of the memories under those themes. You know, Ed had a lot of tools, could fix everything at the shop and at the, at the house, um, and he had spare parts for everything. Uh, as we went through and cleaned out the shop after he retired, and we cleaned everything out of the shop as he closed down the business, you know, one of Courtney's memories was she said the big brown box looking TVs. <laughs> Couldn't believe how many of those came out of the basement, you know. Uh, a lot of kids don't even know what those are anymore these days. Uh, Rhonda, you know, talked about how his daughter Rhonda, how he taught her how, you know, that she could fix things that she didn't think she could fix and just take pride in everything that you do when you're fixing things. But you could tell really see the pride in everything that he had. You know, Clay mentioned his yard was pristine, which it still is. Um, taking care of cars, his cars were always in perfect shape. You know, he took a lot of pride in a lot of things that he did. Um, Michelle mentioned that, you know, when she was little, she said she mentioned that someday she wanted to marry a guy that could fix things like he did. And uh, I don't know if I quite, you know, match up to Ed, but <laughs> I give it a shot, you know. And uh, learned some things from Ed. You know, he taught me when we were finishing our basements, he taught me how to solder copper pipe for plumbing and learn a lot of things from Ed's on cars and stuff. So he could pretty much fix anything. Uh, a couple more car stories, I guess. Mike mentioned his son Mike, you know, um, when he bought a car, his first car, uh, it was a three on the tree, which some of you may or may not know what that is, but you know, that shifter up on the column. And didn't think maybe that was cool enough for a high school kid, so not knowing what he was doing, he figured out how to put, put it down on the floor for Mike so he could have a cooler car. <laughs> He's always caring about things like that. And then Randy, he uh, lost his keys one day and he had to go to Kansas City. This one's, this one's maybe a little sketchy, but um, uh, he had to get to Kansas City, lost his keys, him and Rhonda, and so I taught him how to hotwire his car. <laughs> so they got down there when they needed to get down there and, and uh, took care of the head to the rescue, you know. Uh, let's see, help. And then helping others, you know, we talk about at down at the store and this all of his all of his friends, you know, he was always constantly taking calls and he owned a TV store, um, going and you know, figuring out remotes for the older people that couldn't figure them out or fixing their TVs for free, making all kinds of calls and just always enjoying, you know, helping out people for free. And uh, you know, Rhonda mentions that maybe that's why she likes volunteering so much now, just you know, learning that from Ed. And then uh, this one's a little bit about a fixing story, but you know, maybe, you know, fixing it was his thing, maybe cooking wasn't quite his thing. 
uh, Mallory's granddaughter mentioned, you know, one time that they were home together and uh, Ed was helping her cook a potato in the microwave and they put it in for a little more than 20 minutes <laughs> and started on fire. Uh, but in the end, you know, on the team here, Ed was able to fix the microwave and they, they continued to use that microwave for a long time. So, could fix anything, so that's pretty cool about Ed. Uh, funny and fun, a couple things about him, you know, he always had jokes, he had hundreds of sayings for everything that just cracked you up. Um, Jake remembered the time when, you know, Jake was, a, my son was a runner, his grandson, and, uh, you know, Ed was asking why he was always running when they invented cars. And so he always had, he always had a crack for everything, you know. Uh, Melissa, another granddaughter, mentioned the time that they met down, first time she met him down in Texas. And uh, he said, uh, well, you're a cute little redhead. <laughs> and so she knew that he, she would always be his, his cute little redhead. So that's pretty special there. Um, we had a little competition going on between Ford and Chevy and the family. Uh, not so many Ford fans, but <laughs> um, Ed's on the Chevy side, and Emily, his granddaughter, you know, bought him a pair of Ford PJs, and he would still always wear those when she was around. So he played in with the game. Uh, the boys like to remember the handshakes. You know, you'd go and reach your handshake, and you'd just squeeze as hard as you could, and twist, and you know, and, and they loved the funny handshakes that you would do with those guys. Courtney commented on how he always commented on how tall she was, and I don't know why they, why he wondered that, but <laughs> she's pretty tall. Uh, Emily mentioned how he always poke poke on their bellies and make sure if there's any room for dessert yet when they're eating. So, a lot of funny things from the kids. And I remember, and all the kids remember, whenever you'd watch a movie with Ed, I mean, he would just laugh so hard on kind of those comedy movies, and he would almost make the movie funny just because he would be laughing so hard. So he definitely was a fun guy. A lot of funny things he would say. Uh, the other one, sports. Started off when he was in high school. He was a great athlete. He you know, learned lots of lots of awards in high school. Carried on into uh, the kids. He, he, his son Mike. You know, he'd go to all of his sporting events. Then he moved on to the grandkids. Attended all their sporting events that he could. You know, wouldn't miss anything that he could that he could help. You know, Brady always said that you know, like Papa was one of his biggest fans of the sports. Uh, Emily and her granddaughter remembered the dance recitals that she would always attend, and, and then me and Jake remember the naps we'd sneak in between dances with, with Ed, you know, and he looked around and kind of a lot of dads were doing it, so it was okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, golf was a big part of his life. The boys, you know, Travis, Jake, a couple guys, a couple grandkids remember him playing, you know, bringing them to putt putt golf, and they'd always go to Zesto's afterward and, and have a, a root beer float. And then golf and putt putt with the kids, you know, and then golfing with us guys. He'd always take us golfing. Uh, Wes remembered a time when he landed up behind a tree and he got down on both knees and, and tried to hack it out of there from his knees and it hit the tree and went back about 50 yards. So that was one of his good memories of Papa. So um, a lot of good memories on golf. We'd get up and go golf before the golf course even opened and pay when he got back. He just, just loved the golf. Uh, NASCAR was big for him. He liked Earnhardt and Earnhardt Jr. And, Took uh, me and my son Jake to a NASCAR race up in Michigan, and we all had our Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon and Earnhardt hats on and stuff like that. And just really enjoyed watching NASCAR with him. Husker games, of course, were big with Ed. Uh, he started a tradition probably 20 some years ago with uh, me, Mike, and Randy taking us down to Oklahoma games and Oklahoma State games. And we made trips down there almost every year, and it continues on. We started adding grandkids and. Last, last year we even uh, had friends come along. Brady rented a mobile home and we brought friends down there and it just, it's, it's expanding and just keeps continuing to grow. So that's a pretty cool uh, thing that he started so many years ago. And then he'd always sit in his recliner with the shelves telling me when the kids were growing up and they had the duck underneath them so they wouldn't miss a second and a half of a, of a race or a sports event or something like that so they wouldn't miss the TV. And then she started talking about when <coughs> He was watching some sports on TV and they got in trouble and they had to stand in a line until somebody would admit, you know, who, who did whatever was wrong there. And uh, a couple of funny ones, I guess, was uh, Michelle said one time they stood there so long that she beat her pants. <laughs> and then one, another funny part that I, that I heard from Michelle is that um, a lot of times they would stand there so long that Janet couldn't take it anymore and she would just admit to whatever it was that, that happened including putting ice cubes in her own bed. So, 
So uh, love sports for sure. And then family, I'll try and keep this book here. I know we're short on time, early. But family, you know, love his family. Uh, love everybody in the family. You know, brought all of us into the family. All the in-laws treat us like family. Um, I remember when I uh, asked Michelle to marry me, or uh, not asked Michelle to marry me, but asked Dad if I could marry her, sitting down in Mike's room, and you know, finally he finally got the nerve to get the question out. And, Got up and shook my hand, you know, seemed pretty excited, and that felt, made me feel pretty good, you know, that he was welcoming me into the family like that. And a little later on, I was kind of rethinking, and I was like, you know, was, was he really, you know, excited, or was that kind of like, okay, now the second second daughter is off me, you know, kind of like a tag you're in, you know, excited kind of handshake, but I don't know, it was one of those two there, but. <laughs> uh, let's see, the grandkids are his pride and joy. Um, boys, all the grandkids today are wearing one of his ties, which I thought was a pretty cool idea. So so that's going on here uh, today. Um, and then we talked about, you know, even towards the end, he would, he would light up, you know, get a reaction at him every time the great grandkids come up, or and his bride, of course, of, of 60 years recently. Um, would, would, there's a few people that could get a really, you know, light out of him there at the end, uh, which was pretty cool. So that's you know, those are some of the things that we wanted to share with you guys, some fun memories so that um, I want to thank you all for coming. It really means a lot to us, and we're going to miss the guy, I can tell you that. So. Thank you. As we open our service, I'll invite the congregation to stand as we sing uh, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me.
in holy baptism, Ed was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, do you know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized unto his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in the resurrection like his. We pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Ed and to all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 43. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle comes from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me now as we confess our sins. Excuse me. I'm looking for my gospel message. No, there is not one. No, there is not one. Thank you. Join me now as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lunette, family, friends, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we heard earlier today, Ed was a fixer. Right? He could fix anything and everything, or so it seemed. He loved to fix things. Again, whether that was the, the transmission in, you know, uh, uh, was it 303? Was that what it's called? 
Three on three. Okay, yeah, see, I, they said I'm too young for that. They're right. Um, whether it was uh, rerouting that from the steering column to the floor, or, or, or whether that was, you know, the electronics, and going to someone's house and, and fixing the electronics that they were called to come and fix, or whether that was fixing all the stuff that the little old ladies wanted him to fix while he was there fixing their electronics. Ed was a fixer. He loved to fix things for people because he, he wanted to make sure everything was right in their lives. And along with that, along with Ed being a fixer, I asked some of the family when I met with them, if, if there was one word, one word that described Ed, what would that be? And I got a, I got a number of different words uh, that were like loyal, loving, reliant dependable, fun-loving, and hilarious. Again, we, we saw or heard all of those as, as Steve shared a number of those memories uh, with us today. And, and one, of the, one of the beauties of, of this time as we gather together, as, as we'll have this time here, and then as, as we head to Memorial Cemetery after the service, and then as we come back to here, to gather around food and fellowship. One of the beauties of that is that, that you get to share all of those stories, more and more stories of who Ed was for you, who he was, how he helped fix things in your life. But one of the things that we know is that Ed couldn't fix everything. And he knows that, uh, and he knew from the very beginning of his life that his relationship with God was broken from his birth. And we saw that Lunette was helpful in teaching that. Because Ed, uh, Ed and Lunette were married on June of 1962, and then Ed was confirmed and baptized in April of 1963, two days after his oldest son, after Mike's birth. Ed was baptized into the church. Ed was confirmed into the church. And in that baptism, the name of Jesus, the name of God was placed on Ed. We, we have a banner over here uh, that, that says, I have called you by name. That's from Isaiah 43, 1, which, uh, which Greg read for us earlier today. I have called you by name. You are mine. In baptism, the name of God was placed on Ed. It says, again, from Isaiah 43, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Even as Ed got to the end of his life and, and was unable to speak the words of his faith, the faith that he has passed down from generation to generation, even as he was unable to speak those words, Jesus was able to speak those for him. As Jesus his name was still on Ed and is still on Ed to this day. And not only were, was the name of Jesus placed on Ed in his baptism, but in his baptism, Revelation 2.10 became that verse that really shaped the rest of his life that says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And again, even though Ed was not able to speak the words of his faith, he was faithful. Not because of him, but because of the faithful God who watched over him each and every day. The faithful God who kept his name, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, on him all the days of his life. And the faithful God that he sees today all that more clearly. Ed was a fixer. But Ed couldn't fix everything. 
But Ed had someone in his life who could fix everything. <coughs> Jesus. Jesus fixed everything in life, and Jesus it, it, someday in, in the future will return to fix the brokenness of this world. Jesus will return to fix Ed's broken body, to raise it up to new and perfect life, to give him a new and perfect body that will never need fixed again. Because it will be fixed for all eternity. And so today we look forward to that day. That day that Jesus will fix all things for all time. Where Ed will be raised up to do life. Where he will again be given a new and perfect body. Where he will be given a new and perfect mind. And in that day there will only be one thing that will need to be fixed. Hebrews 12, if you, it, it's written in the English Standard Version, but the NIV, the New International Version, uh, verse 12 says, Come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. In that last day, there will only be one thing that needs fixed, and it's our eyes fixed on Jesus. And they will be every knee will bow and as every tongue will confess and every eye will be fixed on Jesus who is the author not, not just the beginning but also the perfecter of our faith so today may you fix your eyes on Jesus today Ed is fixing his eyes on Jesus as he sees him face to face and may you all fix your eyes on Jesus who is your author and who is the perfecter of your faith and who will return on that day, on that last day, and raise up Ed and all who have faith in him to new life. Until that day, as you fix your eyes on Jesus, may he give you the peace that passes all understanding as we fix our eyes on Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Again, amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding, keep your eyes and your hearts fixed on Christ Jesus, our Lord, our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We ask that you would give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God, we ask that you would give to the family of Ed and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care, that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to the, to the bereaved and within the communion of your church. They may have strength to meet the days ahead and the assurance of a holy and certain hope in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love and who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Ed and for all the blessings he bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O 
Oh God of all grace, who sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light, we give you thanks that by his death you destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now listening to the recording of the Lord's Prayer by Pastor Levine. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations. The glory of your people is Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let's pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy, and you bring them home. Comfort us with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life, and with a joyful reunion with those who we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And receive the blessing of our Lord. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Before we conclude our service again, I want to thank you for being here today as we remember the life of Ed and celebrate that he is with Jesus today. Uh, immediately after the service, you're invited to, to join the, the family out at Memorial Cemetery for the committal. Uh, and then you're welcome back here for, uh, for a time of lunch and fellowship. And again, to share all of those stories uh, of how Ed made an impact on your life. The, the things that he fixed in your homes and in your lives. And so uh, as we prepare for that meal, uh, I'd like to take a moment to, to pray for, for that food and fellowship together. We pray. Uh, Lord Jesus, again, we thank you that you are the resurrection and the life, and we thank you that, uh, for the life that Ed sees all that more clearly today. We thank you that you are the peace that passes all understanding, and we pray for an extra measure of that peace uh, here in this place and, and to be able to then go with the family and friends of Ed uh, until you return to raise him up to new life. God, as we look forward to that time of fellowship, to, to gather around the table, to, to share those stories, we just pray that you would be with that time, that, that that time of fellowship would be uplifting, it would be beneficial, it would be, it would be soothing to our hearts. We also pray for the food, that it would nourish us on to serve and to love our neighbor, and we, uh, we thank you for those who have prepared it and are serving it for us. Uh, this later this afternoon. Uh, we pray all of this in your name, knowing that you hear and answer. Amen. We close our time together today being reminded of the amazing grace that God has had on Ed and that he, had, he has for each and every one of us today. And uh, we, we, So we listen together to the song, Amazing Grace. <laughs>